Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to take a look at using Green's theorem to evaluate double integrals by doing a line integral. And I'm going to do that with an example of calculating the area of a region. Actually, I'm going to do it three different ways uh, and suggest that there's many, many more ways you can do it. Okay. So here we go. Remember, re recall Green's theorem. Okay. Uh, I've got a region which is open and simply connected, and its boundary curve, C, is a simple closed curve. And I've got some vector field, F, which is P, comma, Q, uh, and it's defined on all of D, and actually on a region a little bit bigger than D, because I need to define on C as well. Uh, anyway, Green's theorem says that the double integral over D of the partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y dA is the line integral all the way around c of p dx plus q dy. So that's f dotted with dr. I want to do calculating the area. So in general, the way you calculate the area of a region is you do the double integral of 1 dA. Um, now, in order to use Green's theorem, I've got to turn this into a qx minus py. So I have one that's going to be turned into qx minus py. Okay. And I'm going to find p and q so that that happens. Well, there's infinitely many different ways that I could do this. Right? Think about the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says, you want to integrate a function? Find an antiderivative, plug in the endpoints, and subtract. Well, there's infinitely many antiderivatives. Now it happens to be pretty nice that all the antiderivatives look the same except for plus a different constant. And so you generally just ignore that different constant. But still, you really have infinitely many antiderivatives you could use. Now the thing is, there's, there's a bigger variety going on here. Because not only you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for p and q, I'm looking, I'm looking for p and q Given this function, at this point, this function is just 1. And so, first of all, I've got to split it up into a q of x minus p of, you know, q, sorry, q sub x minus p sub y. That's going to equal 1. And once I make those choices for what's this q of x and what's this q sub y, p sub y, then i got to integrate them, right? So i got to integrate this q sub x with respect to x and this p sub y with respect to y. And, you know, there's going to be plus constants on either of those. Actually, in those constants could be functions of the other variable. Uh, there's all sorts of different uh, ways that this could be done. Okay, And if you find a clever way, you might be able to get a lot of different insight that other people don't necessarily have. So here's a few clever ways that people have already figured out. Um, so I am going to... I'll leave that right there. So I'm trying to get q sub x minus p sub y equal to 1. So I'm going to say my q sub x minus p sub y is just going to be 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. So I'm thinking of q sub x as 1. So integrating with respect to x, I would say that q is equal to x plus a constant. I don't need to worry. I can pick whatever constant I want. So I'm going to choose 0. And I'm thinking of p sub y is equal to 0. So I integrate that to get any constant. And I'm going to choose the constant 0. Okay. So now, in general, I can do this to figure out the area of a region. Now I'm going to do a specific region. I'm going to do uh, the region inside the circle of radius 3 centered at the origin. So this curve, r of t is 3 cos t plus 3 sine t, with t between 0 and 2 pi, is the boundary of that region. And it goes around counterclockwise, so in the positive direction, um, with... Uh, yeah, with t between 0 and, and 2 pi, so it goes around exactly once. And because I'm going to do a line integral, I know I'm going to need the derivative of this thing. So r prime of t is uh, derivative of 3 cos t is minus 3 sine t, and the derivative of 3 sine t is 3 cos t. Okay, so now, by Green's theorem, the integral of 1 dA is the line integral around the boundary of p dx plus q dy. Well, p, we said, is 0, and q is x. So I have 0 dx plus x dy. 
which is just the line integral of x dy. So x is the 3 cosine t out of the parameterization. The dy is the 3 cosine t out of the derivative times dt. And my integral is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 3 cos x. Sorry, three, sorry what is this? This is 9 cosine squared uh, cosine squared t dt, which is 9 times pi. How do I know it's 9 times pi? Um, I know the picture of cosine squared. So here's 9 cosine squared uh, t from 0 to 2 pi. If I, if I think about the rectangle with the corner at the origin, up here at uh, 0, 9, up here at 2 pi 9, and at 2 pi 0, that rectangle is 9 high and 2 pi long, so it's 18 pi area. But I only want the area under the curve. But that's exactly half of that rectangle. So 18 pi divided by 2 is... 9 pi. So the integral there is 9 pi. And sure enough, the area of a circle of radius 3 is pi r squared, and r here is 3, so it's 9 pi. Not a surprise. Okay. But this line integral of x dy calculated that. Now I need to draw a picture. This is, this is a really pretty cool thing here. So I'm going to draw a picture. I've got my circle. And I've got my axes here. This was circle of radius 3. Now, the line integral I'm doing is that for each x value, or you're thinking for little increments of x, take that x value and multiply it by dy. So x is the distance from the y-axis from the from the y-axis over here, and then I move a little bit in the y direction, and I so multiplying would give me the area of that rectangle. And then for the next x, I move along the curve and I say how, how you know what was the change in y and so that x value times so so the x value is horizontal the dy is vertical and then again you move a little bit and you say okay I changed by that much in the y's times the x I changed that much in the y's times the x so you're adding up all these little rectangles each x times that little change in y until you get you know you get down here and then you start getting negative x values. But as you move along the curve over here, the y values are getting smaller. So the y's are getting smaller. So you got x times a negative y. Actually, they're negative x values times a negative change in y. And a neg other negative x value and another negative change in y. So all of these are giving you the areas of positive area of these rectangles, right? Because it's a negative x value times a negative change in y as you're moving around this curve in the positive orientation, so in the counterclockwise direction. And by the time you get all the way around, you'll have these rectangles all through this side and then back again all over there, and you'll have calculated the area of the circle, right? And this would work for any curve, even, for instance, if this curve is, say, something, you know, something off the side here. Right? When I do, I'm going to choose my starting point right here, rotating that way. When I do the line integral of x dy around this curve, at first, I'm starting here going that way. So at first, I'm going to be getting too much area, right? That these x values, you know, this x value times a little bit of y is going to be too much. In fact, I want to, I want to do this by this right here. I think I need to move my face. Hang on. Move my face over there. Um, so I get I get this area and then that area and then this area and this area. And you can see I'm I'm getting too much area. As I go around, each x value times a little change in y, uh, it gives me too much. But then I start coming back along the along the curve. Oops, so let's pick another color here. Let's pick this. And now, with it, with it drawn this way, the x values are still positive along this part of the curve, but the y's are getting smaller. So the dy is negative. So this gets added as negatives. And the net result, by the time I get all the way around, I've added up too much area, and then I've subtracted off all the extra stuff that I added on, and I end up with 
the area inside of that curve, the integral of x dy. Now the next example we're going to do is exactly the mirror image of this. So let's do this. Oops, let's move my face back over here. There we go. Uh, the next one, I'm still trying to get q sub x minus p sub y to equal 1, but this time I'm going to do it as 0 minus negative 1. So I'm thinking of the q sub x as 0 and integrate that. It will still be 0. And the partial of p with respect to y, I'm thinking as negative 1. So integrate that to get p equals negative y. Same region, same boundary curve, same derivative. Area is still the integral of 1 dA, but now when I change that to the line integral using Green's theorem, it looks like the p is minus y times dx plus the q is 0 times dy, and this is the integral of minus y dx. In this case, I can plug the minus y. Where is y? y is this 3 sine t, so minus 3 sine t, and the dx is this minus you can't see that, can you? So the y is, is the 3 sine t, and there's a minus y. The dx is the minus 3 sine t dt, so right there. And again, I get the integral, oh, well, this time it's 9 times sine squared t, but again, the integral of sine squared t is going to be uh, pi, and so I get 9 pi. All right. I'm going to draw a picture of this one as well. So let's hop back over to here. Let's get myself a clean sheet. Ah, move my face. Okay. So in this case, it was a circle, but I want to I want to draw you know a goofy region here and say. When I orient this going in the, whoops, not that, going this way, going in the counterclockwise direction, I'm going to start right here. And when I do the integral of, if I did the integral of y dx, what I would be doing is I would be getting this y value times a little change in x, and then this y value times a little change in x, and that this y value times a little change in x. And I would be adding up all this stuff underneath the bottom as positive. So what I want to do is I want to make that negative. So all of this stuff here is counting as negative. So I think I was using reds for negative before. So all of this stuff is being added in as I have it drawn with positive y values and I'm moving in the positive x direction. So the if I didn't have the minus sign there, these would be adding up as positive area until I get over to here. And now I start headed backwards. So I'm still looking at positive y values, but I'm getting negative dx's because the x is getting smaller. And so the minus times plus times minus is now going to be a positive, And I'm going to, I'm going to use the positives here and and the area is going all the way down because it's it's the full y value all the way up to the top times a little bit of thickness. And I'm using a thick pen here to indicate that you know the dx is pretty thick. And so you just keep going all the way across here, blah 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 blah. The all this negative stuff that you got to begin with is now canceled out by some of that positive stuff as you came back, and the difference is just the stuff inside and you've calculated the area of that region by doing the line integral of minus y dx. Okay. I, I just think this is cool that you can do something around the boundary and figure out what the area is on the inside. And one more example. Um, and this is essentially just add the last two up and divide by two. But uh, I can think of this q sub x minus p sub y as a half minus minus a half. And so q sub x is a half, and q is x over 2, p sub y is minus a half, p is minus y over 2. And same region, same curve, same derivative. Uh, this time, though, the, the well, it's still the Green's theorem. 
p dx minus q dy here, the line integral all the way around the boundary. But the p is minus y over 2, and q is x over 2. Uh, and just plugging everything in, uh, I end up with a 9 sine squared t plus 9 cos squared t uh, integrated from 0 to 2 pi up with times a half out in front, because each of those had a half. And so I end up with 1 half of 18 times pi, which is 9 pi. Okay. So this is sort of doing both of them at the same time. Uh, and then add them up and divide by two. Okay. Oh, I do have one more example here. Yeah, let's do this one more example. This is polar coordinates. In fact, I feel like moving my face. There we go. Let's go back up here. Um, the area when you're doing a polar coordinates, remember, it's in x and y, it's one dx dy or one dy dx. But when you convert to polar coordinates, that dA turns into r dr d theta or r d theta dr. I'm going to choose to call it dr d theta, and I'm thinking of I'm thinking of r as my first variable and theta as my second variable, right? Because this p sub x and the q sub y, you have a x is usually taken first and y is usually taken second, and there's a right-handed rule that kind of works in there. Anyway, um, I, I'm I'm doing it this way, All right? So I'm, I'm thinking of R now as playing the role of X and theta as playing the role of Y. So instead of Q sub X minus P sub Y, it's Q sub R minus P sub X. And I need this now not to equal one. There's an R in here. So this has to equal R. And I'm thinking of it here as um, R minus zero. So the q sub r is r and the p sub y is zero. Integrating both of those with respect to the appropriate variables, so integrating this first one with respect to r, I get r squared over 2. Integrating the zero with respect to theta, I still get zero. Um, so my integral of 1 dA, which I change to the integral, the double integral here of r dr d theta, now becomes a line integral by Green's theorem of 0 dr plus r squared over 2 d theta which is just the integral of r squared over 2 d theta, which is absolutely wonderful because, 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 I love this stuff. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's, let's get a little more space here. And get my face out of the way a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Maybe I just take it right off the screen. So here we go. What I want to do is, uh, so picture a region, any region. Okay. I'm happy to draw it so that it doesn't contain the origin, but it, it works anyway. I'm, I'm going to say that there's a minimum theta here, that, that, that at some point there's a, there's a spot right here, and I want to think of that as uh, my starting point. And I'm going to go around, I'm going to do the line integral going around counterclockwise. And the line integral I'm doing, remember, is the line integral of one half r squared d theta. Okay. So start here and head this way. Right? I have uh, the way I have it drawn. I have positive r's, and if I change theta by a little bit, then it's just I'm essentially making a little wedge. Right? And so there's a bit of there's a bit of arc length here, and when when d theta is small. That that little bit of arc is essentially you're, you're looking at a sector of a circle, right? This is r, this is d theta. I know that the arc length here is r d theta, and I know the area of that sector. It's like a triangle. It's one half the base times the height. Well, the height is r, and the base is r d theta. So the little bit of area there is one half r squared d theta, and so. This one half r squared d theta is in fact the area of that little tiny wedge, and then you move over and you get the next little tiny wedge, and then the next little tiny wedge, and the next little tiny wedge. And so by the time you get over to here, you have calculated all of the area inside of that far away curve. And now you start coming back. The way I have it drawn, the r is still positive, but since you're coming back, the d theta is negative. And so wait, let's 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 do this again here. So with all this positive stuff that we added up on our way out there, 
all this positive stuff going that way, I'm now getting negative stuff coming back. And the net result is I calculate exactly the area inside the region. One half r squared d theta. It's just lovely. It's just lovely. Now, at the end of this section of the book, there's a whole exercise on this thing called a planimeter. And I remember in, in college, I took a surveying class once. And there's, it, the, a planimeter is a machine. It's, it's a machine, that simple machine. It, it's like an arm. It's got a, it's got a shoulder and an elbow and, and a pen that you hold out in your hand here, right? And so the shoulder is attached to a pivot point. And then the arm sticks out, and then there's the elbow that sticks out, and there's a there's a little pointer right there. And what you do is you've got you've got a map, and you've got a region on the map, and you want to calculate the area. There's a little thing right here with a dial on it, and you you start here, you start you know pick any spot, you notice what the reading on the dial is, and then you trace along this thing with this point, and so. You know the the shoulder. You know, the shoulder has to move, and the elbow has to move as you as you trace around this thing, right? And you get all the way back to where you started from, and you look at the dial again, and you've already calibrated it so that you know that if it changes by so much, you have an area of whatever. Um, and it just it just calculates the area on the fly. It's like what the heck is it doing? You know, I remember at the time thinking I can draw two shapes with exactly the same circumference, and they have completely different areas. How is it doing this? Well, it's doing a line integral. Maybe x dy, maybe y d minus y dx, maybe 1 half r squared d theta. Actually, it's not doing any of those. It has a different coordinate system because of, because of the mechanism. You've got, essentially, you have, the, what's the x y here? Well, the x, y is determined by two things. It's determined by the angle that the shoulder has turned through. And let's, let's say measure from here. It's, it's determined by the, the angle that the elbow has bent through, right? As that's turned through. So you, you know the radius of this and you know the radius of that. Those are fixed. And so from these two coordinates, theta and phi, you can calculate what x and y are. You can then do a Jacobian to figure out what the, the change of, you know, because you still want to do the inter, double integral of 1 dA, but you've got to change that now to a double integral of something d theta d phi, and what's the Jacobian? Once you know the Jacobian, then you're going to find P sub theta minus Q, or however it goes, Q sub theta minus P sub phi, Right? And then integrate Q, integrate P, and, and you get this, this, this line integral that you can do. But the more remarkable thing is that it's doing it mechanically. It's doing it by whatever this little dial is measuring there all the way around. The polar planimeter. Look it up. Take a look at the thing at the end of the, the section there. It is fascinating. Um, as to how the this mechanical thing does a line integral on the fly, it's just it's just amazing piece of engineering. Anyway, Green's theorem. It's it's a marvelous thing.